I'll be completely honest. I had no expectations for Lance Lynn to be a capable starting pitcher for the Dodgers after he was acquired from the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Back in 2021, when Lynn was 34 years old, he actually had a phenomenal season in Chicago, finishing with a 2.69 ERA over 28 starts and finishing third in Cy Young voting. In 2022, however, he got off to a terrible start with a 5.88 ERA in his first 11 starts, but managed to finish strong in the second half of the season to settle with a 3.99 ERA for the year. When 2023 came around, he once again had a miserable start, one the Chicago White Sox had enough of, sending him and his 6.47 ERA to the Dodgers, who would then turn around and trade Noah Syndergaard, who was having a nightmare season of his own, to the Cleveland Guardians. Well, the Dodgers look to have turned their trash into treasure, because Lance Lynn has completely turned his season around, having one of the best months of any pitcher in baseball. In his 5 starts in August, Lynn gave up just 7 earned runs over 31 innings pitch for an ERA of 2.03, including a streak of 15 consecutive scoreless innings. Just to put it into perspective, his 7 runs in August matches last start for the White Sox alone, when he gave up 7 runs in just 4 innings to the Chicago Cubs, his 4th start of the season giving up 7 or more runs. I'm not sure what's changed, but Lynn has been a completely different pitcher in LA, and with the Dodgers red hot offense supporting him, he's gone 4-0 to start his Dodger tenure, and his team is thus far undefeated in his 5 starts. To make things look even better, Noah Syndergaard has been the exact same pitcher for Cleveland as he was in LA. After an encouraging first outing in which he gave up just one run and two hits over five innings, the wheels have since completely fallen off, giving up 19 runs over 28 innings in August for an ERA of 6.11. As of Sunday night, Syndergaard has been designated for assignment. For the Dodgers, this has been the absolute best case scenario, as the injuries to their starting rotation were severely limiting in the first half of the season, to the point where the Arizona Diamondbacks actually had the lead in the division. Since the trade deadline, however, the Dodgers have been the best team in baseball with a red-hot offense and a four-man starting rotation that all finished with sub-three ERAs in August. They've completely run away with the National League West and are just four games behind the Atlanta Braves for the best record in baseball. Lynn's next two starts are against the Diamondbacks who are winners of 12 of the last 15 and then a struggling Marlins team who will be in full desperation mode. His role come playoff time is uncertain, but Lynn's contributions to the Dodgers cannot be ignored, and we'll see how much the 36-year-old veteran still has in the tank. Swung on and missed strike three, so Lynn with four strikeouts through three, and we have no score after two and a half. I could square one here in the fourth, second and third. Nasty breaking pitch to get a swing and a miss, and the first out of the fourth. Second and third, one gone for Nolan Jones. Got him. Bottom fell out of a breaking pitch to finish off Jones in back-to-back -back Ks. Three out of the last four pitches are off speed, and this one looks like a strike long enough to get the bat moving. Michael told you. 2-2. Two -two. Lifted to left center field. Peralta's going back. No big deal for him. How about Lance Lynn slamming the door? It's an unearned run that scores on the air. Doyle is coming up. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Doyle's the first out of the fifth. Not a strikeout of Doyle. Now the pitch is swung on and missed by Jerickson Profar and a fastball out of the zone. 0-2 oh, to Tovar. Got him with a fastball. Nine strikeouts for Lance Lynn, including all three outs here in the fifth. Here comes Lance Lynn, ready to make his fourth start for the Dodgers. Well, of course, it's the warrior mentality. It's the confidence to throw the hard stuff an awful lot, but he's throwing way more four seamers. And he's mixing in a lot more sliders and a lot more curves. Yelich climbs in on this 1 1 pitch. Yelich breaks his bat and a roller to second, and Mookie bats for the first out of the night. As William Contreras steps in, the 2 1. Fly ball, shallow right. And underneath it to make an easy play is Jason Hayward. Carlos Santana. There's a fly ball to right field. Back goes Hayward at the wall. He jumps and makes the catch. Santana with a long fly ball, and Jason Hayward with a jumping catch at the wall. For Monasterio, boy, he's kicked around. Nine seasons in the minor leagues. And there's a shot to center field. Racing on back is Outman, and he will track it down on the warning track in front of the wall. Tag the catcher Caratini's at the plate. Grounds one to second. And that'll do it for the Brewers in the second. On one, two, he does get a swing and a miss. A little bit closer to the zone, and it got him the bite. First one to Caratini. Chopper right side. Betts is there. Stays on his feet and gets it. To Contreras. 
Bounce back to him. He'll come home, and they've got him hung up. Barnes running Taylor back. He tags him out. In second now, one out. Carlos Santana at the plate. And a shot that's caught by Freeman. Freddie Freeman saves the day yet again. Two out in the six. Gold is heavier than leather, but he flashes that gold glove around like, well, this is pretty easy. Up to Freelich, the 1-0. Pop fly, left side of the infield for Kike Hernandez. And Lance, who Danny Lynn, a magic act to get out of this inning.